In this video, I will be going over texture painting of just the color diffuse map in Blender and some light touch-up cleanup of the mesh geometry. An essential tool for texture painting is a Wacom tablet. Professional industry standards in an office setting is the medium size one. Mine is 15 years old and still works. But it has been in storage. Sometimes you can find fantastic deals on Craigslist for used tech, just make sure to test it out in person. First, we need to assign a texture image to the shader that is assigned to the mesh. The bright pink means missing texture file or shader error. Open the shader mode and pull up to enlarge the shader node viewable area. With the desired mesh selected in object mode. Home is hotkey to center the nodes into view. Whatever mesh is selected highlighted in light orange outline will be the shader node that will show up in the viewable nodes workspace. Shift plus A to add a texture node. Select texture go to image texture. Click on the color yellow dot and drag the line to the color dot box to connect the nodes. Select new to create a blank image file to paint on. Name your new file and specify the size format. 1024 by 1024 is reasonable for the just the head. However, 2048 by 2048 for the body. Both can be downsized later for render efficiencies if needed. The DPI of your textures are depicted by the amount of details needed and what the end goal for your projects and limitations of your time and computer. Go into texture paint mode in the menu tab at the top of screen. I don't know why it is black and was not able to pre-select the color of the new image. It's okay time to scribble in brown. To start painting, select the paintbrush icon in the toolbox. Select a color from the color pinwheel. The colors you mix can be added to a palette so you don't have to keep remixing the colors as you work. The size of the brush tip can be adjusted with the hot key F on the keyboard and scrolling with tablet pen. You can still texture paint with just a mouse, however, it won't have touch sensitivity like a tablet pen if you wish to have subtle details and more accuracy. I am enlarging to make a sized brush to fill the page with a base color for my hound texture. I can't find a fill bucket tool in here. Let's see how this works. Seems good to go. It is updating on the mesh right away. If you want to mirror your painting, select Mirror in X in the 3D viewport beside the little butterfly icon near top right of viewport. Mirroring only works when painting on the 3D mesh directly. Painting on the left side paint editor is does not mirror. I am testing out the blending of the colors. The brush intensity and style of brush tools are adjusted in the option boxes near the top of the screen. Now I am using the eyedropper icon to sample the different colors mixed from random places and adding it to the palette with the plus symbol. Just getting a feel for the tools in here. Remember to have fun along the way and don't be afraid to experiment and explore. We learn the most when we fail. Most important tip. Always save your new image. The image you see in here at the moment is only a temporary texture and only becomes permanent if we save its file with specified name into a folder path. Always save often and different versions along your way. So you don't lose your work or can go back to previous versions. In the image texture node I am loading in the file that I have saved off just to make sure the right folder path is connected. This is optional, but to speed up the process, since I am going for a higher realism look for this hound. In Photoshop, I have taken the baked normal map and desaturated it used it as an overlay over brown color and saved off a target image and loaded this in to paint on. I have cropped out parts of reference image and even out the light and shadow areas it and transformed its shape to try and fit within my eyes in Photoshop. However this is limited and somewhat futile since sourced reference image is so low pixels. It is more a guide to help me start. I often find starting of a texture from scratch is a little bit overwhelming. So I either block out big areas of colors first and then I work on small simple details and branch out from those areas. 
and before you know it, we'll eventually connect the details to create an image. Just working on the bigger bulky folds, and I'm having a hard time color matching the tones without it looking too blotchy or bland. I don't know what to think, the way it mixes the colors is somewhat different than what I expected. I think this color palette is going to be very handy. Creating a blend of colors that would work for this area. Usually I paint in details by starting off with the shadows that define the shapes, then go in with a lighter tone for the highlights. I think the key to adding a touch of realism is that there is tonal variations within the shadow areas as well as the highlights. Meaning that some parts of the shadow areas may have more saturations or slight color variations than other shadow areas. Same goes for the highlight areas. Much like our faces in a real photo. We are actually very blotchy and have a large variety of blue-green hues mixed in with peach colors. I think I will not worry about how impressionist painterly look the brush in here is creating. I just want to focus on blocking in the main details and tones. I'm not going to be doing a close-up Galmore renders of this hound's feet. I think it saves more time to exaggerate the details first and then go in with the smudge blend tools to blue out details after and in Photoshop can make it more subdued as an option. As well for making specular and roughness maps. A more exaggerated contrast of dark from light areas makes for better maps. So far, what you see here is already four hours into painting. The recording failed to record some parts of the paint, such as the chest areas. Either way it's boring for most viewers and takes me too long to render and upload. And I don't know what to talk about for such a long video, as it seems most prefer a narrated video. I actually have no idea what dog's anatomy is. I am sorta of just making stuff up. Honestly, most people don't really know either. So it's okay. A smarter person would just throw on a first shader and be done already. Pedicure for this fancy dog. I enjoyed painting the dog's feet the most. The geometry needs to be cleaned up on these feet. The low poly mesh that was morphed to fit the multi sculpt high residential mesh looks gross. Just tweaking the pulleys to get in line already. I am using the snap magnet to vertices tool. The magnet tool is the little horseshoe icon in the top of the screen near the middle. Select the type of magnet you need. Adding in some finishing touches, just as highlights, to add realism and make the texture pop a tad. Now is a good time for me to join and sew and meld the toenails to the feet, since normal maps are all baked off and this is near completion. But I want to take a look at the mesh to do a 360 check since I have cut and mirrored this mesh which was not showed in this video for you. I am looking for weird light artifacts as Blender does not merge the mirrored meshes correctly in a way that the normals stay the same. See how the light under the neck and tiny bits of the nose just isn't consistent with how one would expect the light to fall off. Same issues in the stomachy area. To fix select mesh in edit mode, go to mesh, then go to normals, and set to face, and or reset vertex normals. Of course this error almost escaped me. All done now. To combine two meshes. Select objects and control plus J. To merge faces, select the verts and press M. Cleaning up the texture as it wasn't painting well, because the polygons were overlapping before the cleanup. Changing the viewport camera aspect ratio so that in close up the angle of the feet won't be distorted. Sometimes the camera just doesn't want to focus in the right area. Polishing off the silhouette. I find it more effective to get super picky with little details at the very end when most of everything is finished off as often a lot of texture work can make up for lack of geometry and with a 3D art or even 2D art for characters. 
often to give the character more press sense and character, sometimes certain features of it you may want to exaggerate or diminish to provide more depth and dynamic dimensions to your creation. This is something AI can't replicate. Much like sarcasm, humor, empathy, these all require a human touch to make it feel authentic. Remember to blend in those scenes. So far, I think Blender Painting Tool is pretty rad. I like it a lot. Just needs some layers and a few more tools, and it would be perfect. I avoided drawing fur on the seams as it would take too much time to match it all up, and keep in mind there will also be speck and roughness map for the fur areas, color matching and evening out the darker fur areas to connect together. I don't want hot spots when it's time to lighting this hound. Hand painting in some fur, to make it look more natural. Okay, done for now. Time to move on to the head before overdoing details that won't even be seen. One last look all around to check for evenness in tone and colors as well as any mistakes sometimes when painting the brush stroke hits geometry in the background and causes weird pixelations. Thos Creepy Blender trolls hard at work. I should have painted the middle sections so that the mirroring isn't so obvious. Maybe I will make time later at the end. In Cycles Render, seems to soften the look of the textures a lot. You will want to adjust your textures based on the kinds of renderer you have in mind. This is only a color diffuse map and normal map applied. Also, the HDRI map used will affect the appearance of the textures as well as any light you might want in your end scenes. I find that that a specular and roughness map help the normal maps pop out more, as you can clearly see how flat the body looks. However when texturing color map it is best to try it look great on its own without the help of other maps to get a solid robust texture as the fundamental building block for all the other layers of texture work. I am deleting all the extra polygons I added for the sculpting. The normal maps baked out poorly, so I ended up cleaning that up by hand painting it. I am showing you how the shader node looks like with the four kinds of maps connected into it. Color, specular, roughness, and normal maps. This should give you an idea of how different the end result could be with these tools. In the shader node tree, you can see the four texture images loaded into the nodes and how they are connected. I will manually load up the images in each so that they appear on the left in the UV editor so you can see what each kind of map looks like. Color maps are always set to sRGB. Specular maps are always grayscale, black and white. White indicating shininess. Black indicating matte surface. Roughness map is in grayscale as well. But it's the opposite of spec, black is smooth, white is rough. The roughness map greatly affects the appearance of the specular map. In Blender more so than in other 3D softwares. The large blank area on these maps is where I will cut copy and paste the hound's head textures to when completed. The lighting in this dry map is on the subtle side. A high contrasting lights, like in sunset, would create stronger shadows than in this setup. I prefer a neutral day light for working base color maps so it doesn't throw me off. Maybe I just like this HDRI map and trying to find a way to use it. Moving on with the head textures. Loaded in map and starting the same way as the body. Using normal map and or baked off displacement map and desaturate those and use them as an overlay as a template to start from. It's really weird but the sculpting of the body went by much faster for me than the head. But with texturing I feel like the head doesn't need as much work done as the body. I got lucky this time. I am painting in some pink tones for the fleshy areas that don't have much fur. The head is a focal point compared to its body. So I want to pay extra attention to the details and give it that fleshy feel for the hairless areas. I'm only showing you highlights of start point, this way you won't be bored to death. It's helpful to add some random areas of high saturation red tones if using subsurface scattering in cycles render as it creates more of illusion of translucent glowy cartilage areas when sunlight shines on it. 
Oh no I spoke too soon. The ears took me a long time to figure how to paint it without it looking like mud. I have a very fluffy fury white dog. She looks like a wet soggy noodle when she is wet. I think she believes she is as powerful as this breed. Only in her dreams. I should have color corrected all my reference images so at least all the dogs are of similar shade and tone. It's bad enough I chose a wide assortment of females and males and age groups. Don't be like me fools rush in. The ears of a dog are very important aspect about them. They use them to communicate and huge part of body language so I want to make sure I don't get lazy and sloppy with this process. I will be putting bones in the ears later one. Especially with how big these ears are will be hard not to stare at them. The better job I do with the color map in terms of creases and folds the less work I will have to do with the speck and roughness maps. I am finding to have less blotchiness in blender paint. Light singular spritz dab of paint spray produces a cleaner smoother look than a constant press and drag. But that takes up more time so I am only using that as final touches. And since the head is the more likely to have close-ups and where I focal area tends to be. I worked on it to be more consistent smooth look for the tones. I think you have solid idea of my workflow for color texture creation. For the nose I start with a darker shade and build up from there and also copy pasted rubber stamped in some textures from random reference. There is a rubber stamp tool in Blender here I wonder if it is possible to drag and drop reference in the send file and source rubber stamp within Blender to your texture map. By the way there is a free photo editor online called www.photopea.com. It has layers and a lot of the most used texture paint tools as Photoshop. Adding some blush and highlights to that contour like how all the modern girls like it these days. Let's change it up and finish fixing this mesh so that the head and be attached to the collar since they are sharing the same UV space and same texture. Select the two meshes you want to join and combine into one mesh. Go into Object menu and select Join or press Ctrl plus Join. But the hotkeys don't always work so I am showing you the menu bar location. Now in the outliner you can see the mesh is just one. Rename it. Select the new mesh and in Edit mode go to Vertices. Select the two vertices and press M to merge and sew it together. However merge by distance was not working on this mesh. If your vertices are overlapping to select both at the same time, try X-ray mode. I prefer to just have the vertices moved away to merge so I can clearly confirm that it has completed the task 1000%. Merge by first and last is fanficantastic tool. It works like a charm. Make sure to check on the inside of the mesh to prevent errors. X-ray mode is on the top of the screen. See the weird shadow and light artifacts? These are errors with normals after the merge. After merging, the mesh normals will need to be reset to make sure it's reflecting the light consistently through each poly. Select the mesh and in edit mode, go under the mesh menu to under normals, reset the vectors. Sometimes reset face is also needed. Time to select this edge loop and turn it into a hard edge in Maya, also called sharp edge in Blender. A hard edge is basically telling that edge to force it to show the light to produce a straight clean edge. 
This way the lighting will be more accurate in these shadow areas. With the desired edges selected, go under Edge Menus and select Edge Sharp. Under this same menu is also Clear Sharp to undo the changes. All done nice and tidy. In EVE Render Mode, this looks pretty great the farther away the camera is. Up close you can see the somewhat rushed job I did with the fur on the face. I spent a lot more time than I wanted to trying to match the head with the body in tone and contrast. I ended reducing the contrast and lessened the shadow and highlights on the body to match the head instead. Thanks for joining me on Frankensteining this hound together. This fur painting was ex wasting. But I think it was worth the pain the but it was to do. I never made that inside mouth still. Oh well least our hound won't be crying all day long. Thanks again for subscribing and liking my videos. I totally dig all the support and feedbacks and questions you may have with your own projects as well as mine. Stay awesome possum.